Welcome back everybody. Today we're not going to be working on the drift truck. We are going to be weighing the drift truck and checking the weight balance of the drift truck. The most difficult thing about drifting a truck is, is the weight balance. Trucks obviously have a lot of weight up front and not a lot of weight in the rear. This means the rear end doesn't have much traction. It's easy to spin out. It's, it's kind of hard to control. Believe it or not, cars with more traction are actually in some ways easier to drift. So weight balance is gonna be pretty important. We want hopefully to be 50-50. It's not gonna be that, but weight is also pretty important. This truck is pretty light from the factory. I couldn't find an exact measurement, but the curb weight range is from 2,300 pounds to 3,000 pounds. So even if it's 3,000 pounds, it's still really light. We did a couple things during this swap to make it heavier. Obviously the engine's heavier, even though it's all aluminum. The axle is a little bit heavier than the stock one. They're both pretty heavy, but the axle is a little bit heavier. We also did a couple things to remove weight. The exhaust is lighter, the drive shaft's lighter. It has less front end suspension components, no torsion bars, so that's a little bit lighter. So I'm really curious to find out what the weight is and what the, the weight balance is. Before we do that, a couple more things have been finished on the truck. All the little stuff with the wiring is completely done. Map sensor's in, intake air temperature sensor's in. That's all finished. Adam did something really cool to tack Tachometer. I'll show you that. When you turn the key on to ignition, it makes the tachometer go through like, like it's like a new car. This gauge cluster has got a clock and some other cool stuff. Truck also has a wide band over there. Literally every little thing on this thing is done. Last night they also checked to make sure the clutch is working and it is. So the truck is going forward, it's going backwards. Saturday or Sunday, sometime this weekend, we're hopefully getting it dynoed and taking it home, which is gonna be really awesome. Um, so yeah, I guess without any further ado, we're gonna throw this thing on the scale and see what it weighs. I'm thinking it's gonna be somewhere in the high 2000s. I'm hoping it's gonna be in the high 2000s. If it's in the 3000s, I'm gonna be kind of sad, but I mean, either way, it's gonna be pretty fast, so it's gonna be cool. Excuse this interruption for a message from this video sponsor, Octane. Octane is an app that allows you to find car events all across the country. It's pretty much a giant map of the United States with events all over. Each person has their own garage and you can add your cars to your garage. So you, you add a picture of the car, you add a description, what make, what model is, you can talk about it. Now, when you find an event, you can RSVP with a certain car. If you don't know how to get to the event, you can get directions to the event. And you can even set up a cruise so you can cruise the event with other people using Octane. You guys can download the app, head over to the Chicagoland area, and you can find the event called Gingium Viewers. It looks like this. It's not a real event. I'm not hosting an event yet, but you guys can RSVP to that event with your cars that are in your garage, and I can check out what you drive. It's a really cool app. Totally recommend you guys getting it. Thank you to Octane for sponsoring this video. That's it. So these are the scales. It's not like one big scale. It's four little scales that you put on each wheel. All right, so everything's working. Let's put the truck on the thing. Okay, it's on the scale. Bed's empty, pretty much. I mean, you gotta get, gotta get this real heavy sack. Yeah, how many pounds were in the bed? Like 60? Yeah, at this point, like 60 pounds. Okay. Whew. Oh, oh, dang. 2690s to 27. That's that's better than I was expecting. I'm really happy with that. 2700 pounds for a truck with an eight cylinder and a solid axle. All right, so how do we look at uh, weight balance? You want to see rear weight, for instance? Turn off the front scales. Okay. So it's 40% rear weight. 40% rear, 60 40. That's not. Terrible. Not for a truck, no. No, that, that's actually pretty good. You figure you want to check like side weight, so it's 49% right now without adjusting your coilovers whatsoever. When you sit in it, it might actually balance out. Yeah, you want me to sit in it? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and take a seat. So you're 50.6 right now for left side weight. Oh wow. Yeah, so, that's really pretty good. Yeah, with like a little bit of tweaking on the coilovers, you could actually get this like side weight wise 50-50. Yeah, you'd have to add like 250. 300 pounds to the rear. Okay. So yeah, we, we'll, we'll never get 50-50, not quite. Some of like the lower key drift events and put like a bench seat back there and give thrill rides. <laughs> Just like the skid pad? Yeah. 
That would be terrifying, riding in the back of this thing. It's all good. Whoops. Nailed it. Hey man, look, it's uh, only a negative 11 pounds. That's awesome. Yeah, so 20, 700 pounds and weight balance 60% of the weight is in the front 40% is in the rear. That's really good I don't really know why it's that good, but it is pretty good We are gonna be doing a couple things in the future to add more weight in the rear number one I'm moving the gas tank to the rear right now the gas tank is like right here Which is a great location But in order to do a four link for the axle the gas tank has to move so the gas tank is gonna go in the back in the future We're talking far future. I do want to do a rear turbo setup. We were talking about boosting this thing, supercharger, turbo. There's not much room for the turbos up there. I want a turbo in the back. Not only is that kind of cool and unique, but it adds more weight in the back. It'll be easy to work on. It'll be cool. So eventually we'll do that. You know, when we do the four link, we'll have more suspension stuff back there. When we do the interior, that'll get rid of some weight up front. Maybe once we change up the front suspension a little bit, you know, custom control arms, all that, that might get rid of a couple of pounds. Either way, I mean, I think we can probably get this to be like, 55 front, 45 rear, which is really good for a truck. This thing is gonna make hopefully around 300 wheel. This engine is rated at 300 crank from the factory, but we've got standalone headers, intake, exhaust. So we're hoping for 300 wheel. 300 wheel and 2,700 pounds. That's a very good power to weight ratio. That's better than the Miata. So that's gonna be really, really cool. I know this is kind of not ideal, but I kind of want to clean this thing. Just because I, I want it to be pretty for the dyno, but I don't have any running water here, so I can't like spray it off and get the dust off. So I'd have to wipe the dust off, and I know that's not good for the paint, but like the paint needs to be buffed anyway, so I think I'm just gonna clean it. Man, this truck looks so good. Oh, wait. I only cleaned half of it. <laughs> wow, that side looks really good. I forgot how nice this truck looks clean. Right now we're moving cars around because we're gonna get the truck outside. A, so it cleans itself. B, so I can maybe drive it up and down the street. Yeah, this is the first drive in the drift truck. I'm driving it! <laughs> it's moving! Oh, I can already feel how torquey it is. I'm not even getting on it, and it's just... <laughs> We're driving it, boys! Oh, it actually feels really good suspension-wise. Was really cool can't wait until i actually get on it it's already really fast so rad on this side and it's so sad on the other side <laughs> but this side looks really good especially since it's wet that was the maiden voyage of the truck everything seemed to work really well it's kind of hard to hear because the exhaust is so loud but it seemed like when i was going over bumps there weren't any like clanks or anything it turned pretty good the steering is definitely uh, pretty stiff i i might want to add, add power steering in the future i will say i was kind of nervous like some of the stuff that i did just wouldn't work and it worked obviously you know it'll be put through a lot more once it's actually drifted but it works on the street at least i think that's it for here i'm gonna go head back 
this weekend we're dynoing it as excited as i am to have the truck back to have it be done i'm just as excited to have it back so i can modify it more i'm already thinking of all these things i can fix moving the gas tank you know new shocks in the rear sway bar in the rear sway bar in the front new bushings uh, adjusting the caster there's so many things i already want to do add power steering because the steering is still stiff i've made a decision that once molly's motor is done i'm going to drive the truck just the drift dr drift truck all the way down to florida pick up the motor drift some down there and then drive all the way back It'll be like the uh, the maiden voyage of the truck. I'm just so excited. Hopefully you guys are too. Driving it today was so awesome. That's it for today. Let me know your thoughts on the weight, the weight balance, and the first drive. I'll see you guys in the next one where we dyno the truck. And it makes, hopefully, 300 wheel horsepower. Hopefully. Subscribe if you're new. Like the video. Dislike the video. And go check out Patreon. If you become a Patreon, you're going to get to see the dyno slash early. Or at least one of the polls early. So, plus you support the channel. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stop talking. Bye, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>